broken. Birds are singing songs of joy. We have come to visit the grave of a friend. But he is not here. Now we understand what Christ said and what God did. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. We come to offer you praise, Christ Jesus, being born of the woman Mary. You share our earthly lives, eating with sinners, you welcome us. Leading your disciples, you guide us. Dying on the cross, you rescue us. Rising from the dead, you give us new life. Praise be to you, our Lord and Savior, now and forever. It is my privilege, in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, to welcome you to this sunrise service and, and to thank the youth and the youth advisors for, for leading this worship this morning. It is a joy to be in God's house, especially on a morning like this. Even, even though it might be early, uh, it's never too early uh, to give God praise and thanksgiving, and, and that's why we're here. That's who we are as Christians. In fact, that's why we come to worship, uh, just to give praise and, and to give thanks to God and to know that, that we can't go it alone, and because of our risen Savior, we're not going alone, uh, that God is with us now, even to the end of the age. And so that's what we celebrate. But as we celebrate, there are still many things that, that we uh, need to lift up to God because all is not well in our world, and so... This is a time that we consider those things, uh, those things that just uh, bog us down a little bit. So uh, in your heart, lift those things up to God and give them to God. I do want to lift up two folks uh, during this time uh, that uh, certainly need our thoughts and prayers this day. If you would please pray for Fran White and also uh, Dale Fortune. Uh, Bob and, and Norma's oldest son was involved in a very serious motorcycle accident late last night. He's in Akron General Hospital, so please pray for, pray for Dale and also for uh, Bob and Norma and their family as well.
God of mercy, God of goodness, your presence is felt here today as we are gathered in your holy name. We sing to you thanksgiving for every joy and every gladness shared this morning. We lift up to you every hurt and worry revealed today. We turn over to you every joy and every concern held, to, held quiet in the hollows of our hearts, secure in knowing that you know what is spoken and unspoken alike. We give you thanks today that we are able and free to gather here together in Christian love for you and for no one another, bearing each other's burdens and rejoicing in each other's victories. And now we lift our voices to you in adoration as we pray together prayer taught to the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Today's first scripture reading will be from Romans chapter 6 verses 3 to 11. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in that order. Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him and that so that the body ruled by sin may be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died but has been set free from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that he will, we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has majesty over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lived, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ. Father God, we off um, Father God, we offer now our gifts and thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, from on the fir who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave by his glorious resurrection. Open to us the way of everlasting life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God of the empty tomb, we come this happy Easter morning with our eyes focused on the lilies. Guide our eyes instead to the cross. Remind us of the tomb once filled, now empty. Remind us of Mary's tears, once of sorrow, now of joy. Remind us of Peter's words, once of denial, now telling the, of the good news. God of the empty tomb, give us the grace to accept both the cost and the joy of following you. Amen.
The second scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and go into the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you came looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. that predictably a lot of people went to the tomb early Easter morning and they thought what they were going to find in the tomb was a dead body and they had everything prepared they have all the all this ointment that they wanted to to anoint Jesus body with and and they came with grief and they just knew in their hearts what they would find was their dead departed friend in that tomb and it seems like it um, we would predict that as well wouldn't we I mean we would think that if we saw someone die that they'd still be dead because dead is dead is dead is dead and we 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 thought that Jesus was going to be there just like we think that when we come to church God's going to be here predictably that God's going to uh, hear our prayers predictably and God is going to uh, uh, be in our midst in our time of need predictably. But it was interesting, there was one person who wasn't there. And we talked a couple weeks ago about that. There's, there's one person who, if we predicted, would have been the first in line. But she wasn't. Mom, Mother Mary, she wasn't there. Um. I guess since I had my kids, my relationship with Christ has become so much deeper. And I told Tom a couple weeks ago, we were studying with the kids the days of Lent, and we were studying who went to the tomb, and that one person was missing. Mary didn't go. She had just seen her son crucified. She didn't go. But why? Wouldn't you be there? Wouldn't you have gone to the tomb? Wouldn't they have had such a hard time crying you away? But Mary knew. Mary knew from the time the angel came to her and told her, you're going to carry this child. This is his fate. The faith of Mary is such a challenge to me as a Christian. The faith of Mary not going to the tomb because she knew he wasn't there. She knew it was finished and he was in God, or he was in heaven with God. She knew that. Do I have that faith? I don't now. It's a challenge every day to carry that much faith when we bury our friends, when we bury our loved ones. It's so hard to say goodbye to that physical it's so hard to truly believe what we say. He's in a better place. They're out of pain. The suffering has ended. We say all of that, but do we mean it? Do we really mean it? Mary knew it. Mary believed it. I wonder sometimes if I will ever have that much faith. But I believe that's the true story of Easter. 
that it really is finished, not just for Jesus, but for all of us. It's finished. When then this life is over, the real show begins. Mm. The suffering is over. Forever and ever we are with our Father in heaven. How wonderful. It's an amazing gift, isn't it? Uncomprehensible. It is, because as humans, we cry for our human loss. Absolutely. And we should. And there's, no, there's nothing on this earth that can take away the pain and the hurt of losing someone dear to us. And, um, and I don't think God intends for that to just happen and, and, and we go uh, about our merry old way saying everything is good. I don't think that's the case. But I do think that uh, Mary had something that maybe a lot of us didn't have. She had the benefit of actually experiencing the presence of the Holy. Remember way back about 32 years before Jesus was crucified, uh, that the Holy Spirit came upon uh, Mary, and the angel Gabriel said, hey, look, conceived in your womb <laughs> is my son, um, and you're going to give birth to the Savior of the world. You see, she had the experience. Uh, of the holy. So she truly knew that there was nothing in that tomb, but I think for those of us who didn't have that experience, we go through and sometimes we question. Absolutely. And um, I think too, not, not just about Mary this time, but about, about Jesus' friends and about John. And, and Mary left with John and she, she lived with him until her death then. And I think about what happens, you know, after, after our friends pass, whether we're at a hospital or get the news over the phone, we gather together, we hold each other's hands, we cry together. Mary went back with John. And this is kind of what we were talking about yesterday is, is I thought, you know, why wasn't Mary telling him, don't be sad? Because what would John's state of mind have been? His, his best friend is gone. And he had to have been overcome with sorrow. And then there's Mary, and she knows the deal. And I believe she tried to console him. But as you said, she knew what no one else could. She knew in her heart what no one else really could know. It's something you have to really experience, to experience the holy, to experience the spirit, to know at the level Mary knew. And maybe that's, maybe that's our challenge. Um, I think about you having uh, given birth to two children. Great kids. You can explain to me that physical experience all you want. But guess what? I can only take that so far as a man. There's nothing I can do to really feel what you felt. Absolutely not. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I can get a sense, but I can't fully understand that experience. Now consider uh, Mary going home with John. Mary having this, this incredible life-changing experience. Maybe she did talk to John. But maybe John said, well, okay. Maybe it was an idle tale. You know, according to Scripture, the disciples went off and went fishing. Not a bad thing for you fishermen. But they just went off and did what they had always done. Mary, the Magdalene, went to the garden to pick daisies. Like she always had early in the morning to put on the table. You see, they, they had knowledge, but they didn't have the experience. And I think, I think as Christians... Um, one of the things that sometimes we lack in our Christian journey is the experience of the holy. Maybe because we try to fight it. Yeah. Maybe we try to fight it. Maybe we, we try so hard to grasp something that's so impossible to grasp that um, you know, we try to predict so much in our life. And, and that word has come to my mind the last three weeks. We try to predict so much. Um, when a loved one dies, we grieve. No, we, 
we, we grieve. And yeah, we, we put up our little platitudes. But do we put up those platitudes to, to, to help us get through it? Mm -hmm. And maybe so. But as you say, Beth, with the power of the resurrection with us, those platitudes are no longer platitudes. They are realities that they are with Jesus. They are with the resurrected one. And, and that's where our faith takes us. Our, fa our faith takes us beyond the tomb. And maybe Mary did struggle, Beth. Maybe Mary did struggle. I'm, I'm sure at some level any earthly mother would. Um, but there's that, that mother's intuition. There's that, that something inside that only a mom knows about their child. And this I think she knew. And this I think is our challenge from Easter. Um, this year more than any other, the message has really kind of become clear to me through Mary's faith that this is the challenge put before us to know that this is, this is simply the first chapter mm. and, and what comes is greater. And I wonder about Mary's life as she, as she raised Jesus. Um, I mean, we all know whether, whether you're pushing him into this instrument or you see an artistic talent or you see them going away that you'd rather they not go. The faith that Mary had to know the way that her son needed to go. Mm. The fate that would await him, which on an earthly level is so difficult to to be okay with, to, to let it be okay with your soul. Yet she did that. She went about her business of raising her child, knowing that he would move on, knowing that he would free all of us from the shackles of death. And I just think it's an amazing lesson for all of us. It's an amazing challenge for all of us to live the faith of Mary. Mm to take that lesson as your lesson of Easter. Amen. Amen. The cross is a reality, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's our human reality. It's our, you know, Jesus suffered an awful lot because we go in different directions. And uh, Jesus knew that. But I think we're Easter people. And that cross is empty. And the tomb is empty. empty. And... That's what we need to grapple with, but that's also what we need to celebrate. And, um, this has been an ongoing conversation with Beth and I after, what, about three weeks ago? At least. A month ago or so. And uh, email back and forth once or twice. And, and maybe, it's, maybe it's a struggle we all have, isn't it? You know, we struggle with, with, with our human reality, our temporal existence that at some point comes to, the, to an end. And we come here on Easter Sunday and really make the affirmation that our life doesn't come to an end. That we have faith and hope that those we lost are alive. And so this Easter, I like that, Beth, having the, having the faith of Mary but have an incredible faith in Jesus Christ as the resurrected Savior, as the one who will call us by name. Um, and God is calling us by name. And all we have to do is turn our ear towards God and listen, just like Mary did um, many years before you know, this experience. Um, one of the things you said to to me, I don't know whether electronically or so. Sometimes we give lip service. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes we give lip service. I, I think we do, and and um, a, a personal experience of a of a friend who passed away. Um, her body had failed her. She died far too young, but her body had failed her couldn't see anymore. She couldn't hold her kids, her daughter, anymore. 
earth was not dealing her what she deserved. And she passed on. And it was so hard. It's still hard. She was a dear, dear friend. And we went through a lot of the, she's in a better place, and her body works now, and she's not in pain, and there is no more suffering. And we still say it to each other, because we still miss her many years later. But it's true. Her body works now. She's happy now. She doesn't have to deal with the crud that comes with an earthly life anymore. She's free. Yes, we're still stuck with the pain of not being able to call our buddy up. We can still talk to her. And I believe she still talks to us. I know we still hear her sometimes. But she's free. She's in such a better place. And she's whole again. And it's just recently becoming real. She's whole again. It isn't lip service. It's true. So Beth, your your prayer for me and everybody here and those who are going to be listening to us on the web, what's your prayer for them and for us? The, the faith of Mary. That when we consider today's a holiday, who won't be sitting around your table today? Who may not be there next year? That they're in a much better place. They're with you in, in heart. They're with you in spirit. And that we will be with them again. Let the people of our risen Savior say, Amen. Amen. stand and sing together.
After the service, please join us in Fellowship Hall for breakfast. The world would call us victims. Jesus calls us conquerors. The world would call us broken. Jesus calls us whole. The world would call us liars. Jesus calls us right. The world would call us heartless. Jesus calls us filled with spirit. The world would call us individuals. Jesus calls us family. The world would call us angry. Jesus calls us filled with love. Leave this holy place today and go into the world as whole and righteous receivers of the gift of all gifts and spread the good news of his resurrection in light. Amen. Mm -hmm. 